So we've looked at all the English 3DS visual novels, all the physical Vita visual novels, let's go back a generation and head to the DS. This was when the prospect of a visual novel in the West wasn't quite so hot, with most of the entries being pseudo VNs, one that almost crossed the line into the genre. A mix of adventure, puzzle and highly interactive elements were still the only way a VN would get translated. So just be warned, some of the entries here may be contentious, as I say, it's a fine line. Before we get into it, if you love visual novels, then hit that subscribe button in the lower right of this video. If you really love VNs, then click that bell button too. It will be the best thing you do today. Unless you pet a dog, of course. Again is an interactive crime novel developed by Sing, a developer who we'll mention quite a bit in this video. They had a short but fruitful run in terms of developing mystery adventure games and again was their penultimate one. This one is a bit different from their usual efforts since they try to use photographic sprites, possibly trying to imitate American crime shows that were becoming hugely popular at the time. As a team of detectives, you have to solve an old serial killer case from 20 years ago that seems to be making a comeback. This is definitely not their best title, but it's one that stands out the most. A bit cheesy with the stock photo models they pulled in for the job, I am intrigued. This was only released in English in North America. Sadly, Europe wasn't seen as a prime audience for the NCIS and the CSI stuff like that. We are prime suspect, damn it! Come on! Moving swiftly onto another game of theirs, Sing's second ever release, which actually has two names, Another Code, Two Memories, or as it was known in North America, Trace Memory. This is more in line with a point and click adventure game as you navigate a 3D environment and solve puzzles using the DS's unique features. This was made with a teenage audience in mind and features some nice hand-drawn character art alongside the pre-rendered backgrounds. Apparently there are two separate translations for this game, with the European release being much closer to the Japanese text, and the North American version altering the protagonist's disposition to make her more skeptical about the events going on around her. They also supposedly added more humour, and we all know how funny those wacky translators are. It's time to go full Ace Attorney now with five of the Ace Attorney games being released in English on the DS. The first four mainline Ace Attorney games are available on the DS, and it's probably the place where most Western players experience them. Before the DS, they were Japanese exclusive Game Boy Advance games. And boy are we glad Capcom took a chance on the Western translations, with the first three games in the trilogy being all-time classics. I've never played the fourth game, I guess the idea of replacing the lovable Phoenix Wright was too much for me to handle, even though I think everyone's warmed up to Apollo Justice now, yes he was the main character in the fourth game. The fifth game is a spin-off title called Ace Attorney Investigations Miles Edgeworth, which stars antagonist turned protagonist the lovable Miles Edgeworth. He's a hero, which does play slightly differently than the main series but has the same essence and it's awesome. When it comes to villains turned heroes, you have the Terminator, everyone in the Fast and the Furious franchise, and Miles Edgeworth, the greatest of them all. The sequel to this was also on the DS but sadly was never officially translated. Come on Capcom! Flower, Sun and Rain may not be a proper visual novel, but it kind of fits the mold alongside some of the others here, so I am sticking it in. Plus it has the balls to be called Flower, Sun and Rain. Ain't no company daft enough to be so plain. I love it. This was developed by Grasshopper and Suda51. It's loosely connected to the Silver Case games. You're on an island resort in a hotel and solve puzzles. The plot is kind of crazy, as you'd expect from such a mind, and it's worth taking a look at if you enjoy Suda51's work. It was originally a PS2 game, but it got its English translation on the DS. Life Signs, which depending on the region you're from will have a different subtitle. In Europe, this is Hospital Affairs, presumably you get some nooky nooky with nurses in the on-call room. In North America, this is called Surgical Unit. This is very similar to another game series we'll talk about afterwards, however, this is considered to be more of a visual novel due to its similarities with the Phoenix Wright games. 
The two Trauma Center games on the DS are definitely where it's at in terms of the gameplay though. I was reluctant to put these on the list due to their tenuous links to being a visual novel, but between cleaning cuts and doing open heart surgery, there are extended VN-like cutscenes with characters conversing and such. It is a fine line as I've said, and I'm crossing it especially for this video, but who cares? These are both great games, they were especially fresh for the DS during the early days. 999 is an all-time classic VN, one of them that pretty much pioneered the escape room genre. Along with Virtue's Last Reward and Zero Time Dilemma, they are part of the Zero Escape series. 999 started it all, and what began as a bit of a cult classic has now become a, well, a, a bigger cult classic. Nine hours, nine persons, nine doors. Solve room puzzles to escape a game of death on a sinking ship. This is available practically everywhere these days, but it started out live on the DS, for which it still holds up to be the best in my opinion due to the use of the touchscreen and dual screens in general. It is one of the best on the system, no question. Lux Pain, however, is not. It's a mediocre adventure VN on the DS with a dark plot that covers group suicide, mental abuse and cruelty. It has a lot of promise to be moody, poignant kind of release, however, whether due to the poor writing originally or just the really bad localization job, this did not live up to its potential. While it does have some cool visual flair, it's definitely not worth adding to your collection if you're here for playing rather than completing a collection. Witch's Wish is a super obscure release in North America. Apparently it commands a rather high price these days, but not because of its quality. This is a rather generic looking game developed by Tamsoft who are best known for their Senran Kagura series. This tells the story of a young wannabe witch who's too poor to go to witch school. In this game you use magic powers to solve puzzles using a stylus of the DS I would guess. Probably not a true visual novel, but it has plenty of story rather than actual gameplay. Sprung is a game with two subtitles depending on your region. In Europe it's called The Dating Game, while North America just says how it is, a game where everyone scores. Lucky devils. This was developed by Ubisoft and seems to be an abomination and should be burned in a fire. I haven't played it, but it genuinely looks bad. Surviving High School is, believe it or not, a visual novel for the DSi, meaning that I think it's only available to purchase on the 3DS eShop these days. And believe it or not, this was published by EA of all companies. A visual novel from EA, just think about that for a second. Is it any good? Well, I don't know about that, but it's one of the few games that makes use of the vertical holding of the 3DS, kind of like a book. I can't say I'm in love with the art style, but you shouldn't always judge a book by its cover even though it looks terrible. Now there are two Jake Hunter packages on the DS. However, as far as my limited knowledge goes, I believe they're basically the same, but one of them has a bit more content. Jake Hunter Detective Chronicles is the original game containing three mystery stories that the famous detective needs to solve, while Jake Hunter Detective Story Memories of the Past includes two extra episodes alongside a slightly new translation. At least that's what I believe information isn't so easy to find. I don't believe either of these were released in Europe. Jake Hunter is a well-known series and these are considered decent examples of the series, but nothing mind-blowing. You're better off with the next game. Hotel Dusk 215 is one of the higher quality VNs on the DS. This was developed by Singh, who also did again and another code to memories on the system. Set in the 70s, you're a former cop on the search for his missing partner. He's staying at a hotel and the room he's staying in is more than meets the eye. You interact with the environment, solve puzzles, interrogate people, but be careful because if you don't watch yourself, you may get thrown out of the hotel by the manager. This is actually a really top quality mystery adventure that makes heavy use of the DS's features. And this released in both North America and Europe, unlike its sequel. Yes, Last Window, The Secret of Cape West is the sequel to Hotel Dusk. This only released in English in Europe due to the developer Sing going out of business before they could sort out a North American release. The fact that Nintendo published this shows that it is a quality title. Some may even say it's better than the original despite the fact it's much lesser known. This is set a year after the events of the first game, so now we're in the 80s, and our protagonist Kyle is investigating a mysterious letter that was sent to him. Expect more of the same in terms of gameplay. It is a pity Sing went out of business since it seems they did a really solid job with this genre. It's time for Konami to get in on the VN action with the only English DS visual novel, Time Hollow. Yes, they are a company with a proud VN history, but rarely share it with the West. 
Never mind, Time Hollow is a decent enough visual novel where a boy who's searching for his parents is in the possession of an item that can control time. The gameplay portions are overly simple, but the story is interesting enough if you're into time travel sci-fi concepts. It seems that just like many of these obscure DSVNs, the price is shooting up. It's not going to be cheap to buy many of them these days if they take your fancy. So yeah, don't fret about missing out on this one, probably not worth the 150 bucks people are asking for on eBay, the absolute nutters. And there we have it, these are all the DS visual novels that I can find, did I miss any? Do let me know, there's a fine line between what's a VN and what isn't when it comes to the system since the developers really wanted to make use of that stylus for lots of gameplay rather than just pure reading. But let me know if something else would fit this mould, go check out some of our other videos that I've done such as a 3DS one and I plan on doing it for other consoles too. Stay tuned for a PSP version later down the line. Subscribe and I'll see you there.